Uh, we still have a few items that we'll hit at the end there. And um, or do we need to move to item number 10? Can I'm going to look to legal counsel. Should we move to item number 10? Mr. Chair, yes. Co cover item 10 and then recess and then you can come Okay. Back. All right. So we'll move to uh, item number 10, discussion of regular meeting agenda. Uh, any discussion or comments on the agenda? I think that commissioner, I mean, the chairman of that last one was very good and spoke well in this last meeting as chairman. But uh, for minutes, I don't think we're changing anything. No, but I'm talking. I mean, I, I know agenda. I got a few minutes, but of last one. Yeah. But I think we're good on this one. Okay. All right. With that, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, recess. The uh, study session. You guys want to? We're going to go ahead and take like a two or three minute break, real quick.
fight the Reds all year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Chandler is so anti-Reds. He does a lot of Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you specialize in commercial, industrial, residential? All the companies that work for it can be a pretty diverse experience and all types of stuff. Like when I went back east, all the work I did was commercial, industrial. I came out here in 07. That was 07. I worked for Spinning Bell Perry. And all they did was multi family. Okay, so right now I'm doing mostly multi family and assisted living. Yeah, it's hot right now. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. So good. We're in the all right well good evening welcome to our commission meeting for october 5th i'll go ahead and ask for a roll call chairman christopher sipple present vice chair brian anderson here Commissioner Carl Bloomfield? Here. Commissioner David Cavaney? Here. Commissioner Greg Froelich? Here. Commissioner Brian Johns? Here. And Commissioner Joshua Ayler? Here. Thank you. Uh, can I get an approval of the agenda? Chairman Sippel, I motion to approve the agenda. Second. A motion by Vice Chair Anderson, second by Chairman or Commissioner Johns. All in favor? Aye. 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 A communication from citizens. At this time, members of the public may comment on matters within the jurisdiction of the town of Gilbert, but not on the agenda. The commission board response is limited to responding to a criticism, asking staff to review a matter, commented upon, or asking that a member a matter be put on a further agenda. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak uh, under this? Seeing none, I'll move to the public hearing consent. All items listed below are considered consent calendar items and may be approved by a single motion unless removed at the request of the commission or board for further uh, discussion or action. Other items on the agenda may be added to the consent calendar and approved under a single motion. Do I have a motion? Chairman Sippel, I motion that we approve the agenda with modification to item 13, DR 13-40. That modification is to strike staff recommendation number six. Parking plan approval is contingent upon floor plans being modified to include an additional 80 square feet of enclosed parking area in each home. Do I need to read the whole thing? No, okay. So I've got a motion by Vice Chair Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bloomfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. That'll move us to our public hearing non-consent. Item number 16, DR 16-22, Santan Pavilions, pay, uh, Phase 1. Amy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission. Um, we are looking at Santan Pavilions. It is a 37 and a half acre site located at the southwest corner of Santan Village Parkway, Parkway in Williamsfield Road. Many of you will recognize this site. Um, it did come before you with the flats at Santan, which is a mixed-use development um, that we saw at a use permit hearing uh, and geez, probably about eight months ago now. It is going vertical with the residential portion, and this is the first commercial portion to be coming in. It is a five-acre site, phase one. As you can see outlined here are the three buildings that are being constructed with phase one. Um, they are directly adjacent to Williamsfield Road and the perimeter landscape is being done with the phase one construction and staff is quite happy that the uh, perimeter is being taken care of at this time. Very modern designs with, oh, we, there we go, um, and the, uh, the landscape is consistent with the flat, Santan, flats of the Santan. Um, and then it is consistent with the Crossroads PAD in the area. So the, the applicant did go um, above and beyond to make sure that everything was compatible with the environs. Grading and drainage, it's primarily held underground uh, to maximize uh, intensity of the site. 
The architecture is very modern. It's in a, a palette of varying grays with wood accent of composite wood cladding and Trenstone Black Canyon um, veneer for the block accent. Um, and there is metal on the building and both the awnings and other features in an iron fixture, um, dark bronze color. Staff is very happy with the architecture that was proposed for this site. It is not identical to the flats at Santan, but it is consistent in styling. And we feel that it's uh, very, very uh, timely and very well done. The, um, the standard parapet height is around 22 feet, with the maximum parapet height of around 28 feet, and the canopies are around 11 foot. There's a lot of movement and projections, both vertical and horizontal, throughout the buildings, as you can see. And then we have um, the perspective. So it's a very good launching pad for the rest of the commercial site with the bigger boxes that are coming in and the additional um, pro um, buildings along both Santan Village Parkway and Williamsfield Road. With that being said, uh, any comments or questions you have, I'd be happy to answer. The uh, color board is up at the dais for your review. Amy, thank you. I'll bring it up to the dais for any comments or questions uh, for staff at this time. Commissioner? Um, so overall, have they set a, uh, a, a we see the, the material board that's up here. Have they added any other colors kind of, since they are the springboard for the rest of the center, is there any, any other color as a main package? Um, at this point in time, uh, they have not uh, introduced any other additional color other than for signage. So uh, if a corporate entity does come in, we will have to look at the, a color that is introduced at that time and how it integrates into the overall design. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Commissioner? So did I hear you say that it doesn't have any, any architectural or finished connection to the flats? It's not identical to the flats. The flats are done in a very uh, modern, contemporary um, style and palette. So the awnings are similar to the projections that come out on the flats. Uh, the flats do use the gray colors within their color palette, but there's no wood on the flats. It's not identical. The flats don't have the same um, parapet projections with openings cut out. They, it's, it's more residential in, in feel. Okay, I only ask because this is a mixed-use development now, and that's supposed to be integrated, so you know how I feel about that. But in any event, uh, yeah, I thought they would be correlated, and I guess I, I would like to be comforted that they do correlate since it is mixed-use. Yeah. So, only comment. Any other questions or comments? Would I ask, would this be appropriate to ask if the applicant's here? The applicant is here, yes. Yeah. If the applicant is here would like to speak, you're welcome to come up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Dean Munkashi with Suite 6 Architecture. Um, we'd like to thank you for calling us up to uh, discuss this project. Uh, in reference to your comment about um, tying in as a mixed-use project, we took that very seriously when we developed our palette. We did talk at length with Embry, the multifamily developer, and we felt that the modern and contemporary forms were very complementary. We feel that the overall color palette is very complementary. And obviously there's a scale difference between what they're doing, which is four and five stories tall, majority of ours which will be one story tall. Also the functionality of retail sort of sets out a different, uh, different aspect and a different um, way of displaying the, the, the building through scale and through interpretation of forms. So we do feel like we've worked very carefully with Embry, but we also had to respect that this was a, these were buildings of different function. Go ahead. I, I do appreciate knowing that you did meet with Embry and, and at least tried to work through some of the palette. I think that, that is important. And, and, and actually what we right. encouraged during that discussion of the mixed-use correlation is that, that the two developers get together because we, we wanted that to happen. So I appreciate hearing that. And, and from what I can say, I, mean, I can't really see because we don't have the flats in front of us either here, but I'm, I'm hoping that those materials and, and the feel does make you feel like you entered a site that is correlated. Yeah. So yeah. We, 
we feel that that's being done not only architecturally, but also very importantly through the pedestrian palette and the landscape integration. There is going to be a seamless uh, ability to drive back and forth between these projects as well as walk back and forth between these projects. So we've made that, those uh, very strong ties as we develop the master plan. Thank you for explaining that. Commissioners, do you have any questions? I, I do. As, as you're in the whole scheme of this project, this is kind of a small piece to it. It's a key piece because you're the first one in. In, in doing that, are you setting the pallet for the rest of it by coordination with the owner? Or is every piece have an opportunity to kind of define its own destiny out there, so to speak? Because if that's the case, I'm not sure that that meets the, the tone and, and the temper of, of mixed use as it was explained to, uh, to me. I'm a civil engineer, the, the touchy-feely of architecture I don't get a lot of, and, and I, I apologize for that, but that's, that's your world, not mine. And, and so I just have a question about that. If, if that's gonna become a comment that, that is common every time a new, a new project comes in. Yes, uh, Commissioner Bluefield, we actually have submitted this as not just a phase one, but also a master plan concept palette that we intend to um, enforce over the remainder of the project. So it, it is, we, we did give examples of how this could be translated, for instance, into a pad building, a drive-through building, uh, a major tenant, a, large, a bigger box tenant. And so we've given lots of thought to how this first phase can be scaled up and down into those various uses. So we, we intend to be our own pre-architectural review committee okay. um, and, and reinforce this design throughout. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions for the applicant? Hi, guys, I just wanted to say one thing. I'm one of the owners and developers of the project. I'm here to represent all three of us. And we do understand. Uh, Amy made it very clear from day one that this needed to be an integrated site, and that's what we do well. Um, you'll see that they're integrated walkways. We understand this needs to be walk friendly. We, if, if you look at the overall plan, you'll see that families, prams, all this can walk throughout the project. Uh, we do understand that. It's going to be very much consistent. We like the theory of a walk city type of environment. I think you're going to feel that and seal that. The, the architecture is, uh, Ambry and us, are, we're friends. We've, had, we've, we've, we've been made friends no matter if we wanted to be or not, but luckily we got along just great. But we do understand what you're looking for. I think you'll see that, and, and we will police this to make sure that it is what you're looking for. Thank you. It, could, could you give us your name and address real quick for the record? Uh, my name and address? For the record, yeah. <laughs> Thank Rochelle you. Stroll, 2701 East Camelback, uh, uh, Phoenix. Thank you. So, uh, well, either one of you could answer this question. Um, so uh, making sure I understand the phase one drive. So you're, you're doing the, the circle and the connection is part of this phase two all the way back. And so all those materials are integrated since this is what was pitched to us as the mixed use that, that all the, we, either all full coordination between both parties. That's correct, Commissioner. Okay. We have uh, not only coordinated the landscape pallets, but we've also coordinated that all the crosswalk materials, all the treatments of asphalt and concrete throughout both projects will be uh, identical. Okay, signage too. We were sold that signage would be. That's correct. Si signage is a deferred submittal, but we are working with uh, Embry to make sure that there's a consistency in that pallet as well. Okay, thank you. I would, as I close it up I would just oh sorry commissioner just so I understand the scope of this initial phase can we go back to the site plan uh, maybe we can help there Amy thank you and just if you could help me understand just the flow of where you're headed with this um, right uh, no no go one that one right there hmm. so yeah so what what improvements are you providing as part of this initial scope here okay so um if you need the pointer, pointer might be good. Uh, can we get him one? Thank you. Uh, we will be constructing. If you could talk into the mic as well, I mean, we're going to see how many different things you can do at once. It's like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Too. It's like playing Twister, right? Yeah. So the roundabout here, which connects the multifamily and the retail project, will all be a part of Embry's construction, which they are uh, undertaking currently. 
Uh, we will be tying into the north leg of that and building this drive up to our first three uh, buildings of this first phase. We will also be constructing the, entry, the two entry drives off of Santan Village Parkway, the major entry drive off of Williams Field, the secondary entry drive off of Williams Field, and the third entry drive. We'll also be making a, a, uh, uh, a road connection down to the uh, Boston Professional Center and to the Embry Project, which will lead all the way out to uh, tie into the street, which leads out to Boston Street. So all of that internal roadway will be built. Okay. And then, and then you're doing all of the perimeter landscaping uh, along Williamsfield and, and Santan, right? Correct. Up to the uh, building setback line, the mm -hmm. line all the way around the perimeter, all the 50-foot uh, setback improvement up to the hard corner. We'll be doing the, the uh, entry monumentation, the gateway monumentation, which is common throughout Santan Village Park. Okay. And then everything along and tying into the roundabout on Santan. Okay, and and I assume the monumentation, uh, the monument signage, and so forth will be phased as, as more buildings grow. You don't necessarily do that all that now, right? So that's correct. And okay. We have, we have not even applied for the comprehensive sign okay. uh, plan amendment. Fair enough. But yeah. that amendment will come in, uh, combining our site as well as the Embry site into one comprehensive sign plan amendment. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, just one more. So you said the driveways, but the. But we're not actually getting the sidewalks at that point since uh, internal sidewalks are just driveway vehicular connections. Uh, that's correct. Ultimately, there will be pedestrian connections which tie um, all the way through the project. At currently, we, we have elected not to make every pedestrian connection possible between the two projects. They, they are accessible using the sidewalks along the right of way in right. the project, and we've made I would say at least four significant pedestrian connections just between our project and Williamsfield Road. Right, but to walk from the residential portion of this property through the mixed use property right now, you would have to go out to the right of way. Uh, that is correct. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, this is a public uh, hearing. Anyone wishing to comment in support? Uh, thank you. Uh, anyone wishing to comment and support or in opposition to this may do so at this time. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this item? All right, seeing none. Uh, Amy, do you have anything additional? Okay, I'd bring it back up to the dais to close the public hearing. Yep. Any other further discussion? Chairman, I do have a quick question for staff. On the landscape plans, uh, looks like it was um, marked out by staff with additional comments that to be addressed during CDs. There's one area of the parking lot that's X'd out, saying removed per case planner. Uh, can you just give a little backstory as to why that parking is not being? Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of Planning Commission, that was X'd out because all the drawings were not consistent. It was shown on one of the drawings, but not shown on the other. It is in a later phase. It is not part of phase one. But at some point in this uh, the overall development, it will be built out. Yes, it will. Okay, thank you. All right, any other comments? I'll call for a motion. Oh, yeah. So, Go ahead, Commissioner. One of the things, so we've talked about the site, and, and I, I have to admit I'm pleased, very pleased to see what's being presented and how it's coming together and how much they're getting started with. I think it's good. And that they've coordinated. We, we haven't really spent a lot of time talking about the the elevations that were provided in the, the finishes and materials and the look and feel of that independently. And I'd like to understand some of the architects maybe on the, on the commission here, maybe just kind of let me know your feedback. Do you like what you're seeing as an independent development? Forget the flats right now. Um, is there anything that concerns you? I know we've, we've talked in detail about the last couple of study session projects, but is there anything here that, um, that would cause you concern? Um, Any of our architect I, friends want to talk about that? I would like to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, overall, like a ping pong I, I, I think match. we do have to consider the flats when we look at this, since it is a mixed-use development. So just, just we don't have them here. We don't, right. we don't have those finishes, right. so that's why I say that. Yeah. But overall, as a look, I, I think it gives a nice, clean, um, 
it's not your stucco box with a cornice and a sign band. So I think there's a lot of movement in the elevation and different materials um, used. So uh, overall, I mean, there is pieces of stucco, but it's not big masses. So overall, as a design in the glass work, I, I feel comfortable with it. I, 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 I do wish we would have the other portion here just to kind of put apples to apples, kind of looking at the mixed use, just so we know that what they look like together, since they are considered mixed use, which I still have different feelings about that I said at a different hearing, but uh, uh, I do appreciate the work that's been done. Um, I kind of wish we had some internal circulation at this point in time because once you get uh, something built, you, you don't know when the next thing is to come. I mean, hopefully this goes gangbusters, the whole thing comes together is what we hear, Every all these pads come together, but when you have a connection point without internal pedestrian circulation, um, is it all right to use the street? Of course, but um, it is something I wish would have been tied in together. But I, I do feel that they're, they're, they're bringing the, the right of way fully developed. So I, I do applaud them on that portion. But to the building, back to your original question, I feel like they're, it's going the right direction. So. Anyway. So um, I guess my only comments then, and I appreciate you letting me pull, Chairman, let me pull the, the uh, architects on our group here. But my only comment, because I do like the, the uniqueness of it. I do th think it, um, it is different, and, and I like the materials that are being presented. The only comment I would have is that I don't really see, in, and even in the elevations, it seems to be problematic, the sign band opportunities. Uh, almost every sign sample that is shown here creeps over different elements, which, which I understand to be at different surface levels. So I, I think you've got a problem with, with creating usable sign bands. That's the only thing I think could be challenging. So otherwise, I think it's creative, and I think it, uh, it's appealing. And from what I remember from the flats, it does, does somewhat correlate. So um, I'd like to comment on that, because I think what the architect's trying to do is bring the signs out to the end of the canopy, which is kind of what we see a lot right now. Um, so I think he's creating those uh, um, elements, and since there are so many, and I'm, I'm kind of speaking out of turn here because I'm not the architect, but I know, that's the speaker. Um, I think I have a broken speaker here. That's mm. <laughs> mm. No, but there, the, there's a lot of canopies and all the pedestrian access is happening underneath it, so I believe they're trying to bring that out. But in the consistency of carrying over the design, I, I felt they've done that. Um, I feel that the... Um, there's a lot of movement within the elevations, which I like. And I, I, I kind of like a little di diversity. You know, it's kind of, we tend in this state to have the same. You know, you go through neighborhoods and it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. And they, they kinda, I believe the architects kind of overcome that with this. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like to experience a little bit different, but he brought a lot of those styles, a lot of nice materials. He brought the tr trend stone into it. Um, there's a lot of the, um, the wood cladding, so I, I'm, I'm in support of this. I feel it's a good project. So Chairman, back, back to the signs, if I could just get a nod from the applicant, maybe. So is that the intent, is that these are canopy tip mounted signs? Uh, Commissioner, we will allow those sorts of signs and it's most likely that the comprehensive sign plan will also allow for wall signs in appropriate locations. Okay. We're not going to give that over to the tenant. It will be controlled but we also recognize that most modern retail gives multiple opportunities for signage, whereas mm -hmm. the old school method was provide a sign band and your sign goes here. Mm -hmm. I think this sort of architecture and, and the more contemporary trends, if, if you go to Old Town and Gilbert, you'll see there's many different types of signs. We feel that really adds to the vibrancy of the area and really makes it more interesting. So we're going to encourage the canopy forward signs as a standard, okay. but there will be an opportunity in a few places for wall signs. So, okay. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner Kevin, we can't engage in conversation with the applicant anymore. We close the... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
I didn't have any of that conversation then. <laughs> Thank you for, for at least clarifying that. So I, I think that would be my only comment. It's just we, we just keep that in mind, obviously. That, that And, and I, I do like creative signs. I, 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 I think that there's opportunity here. I just won't want it to be forgotten. So thank you. Thank you. I'll go ahead and call for a motion. A motion we approve DR 16-22. I have a motion by Vice Chair. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bloomfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I'll move on to administrative items. Planning Commission administration, consider approval of the 1617 calendar regular meetings. Um, anyone have any questions on that? I, uh, can we talk to when we're going to do open meeting law training, please? November 2nd. November 2nd, our next meeting. Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion? For item number 17? Please. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the Planning Commission administrative uh, calendar for 2016 through 2017. I have a motion by Commissioner Ayler. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bloomfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item number 18, Planning Commission minutes. The consideration of the approval of the minutes from the study session and regular meeting of September 7th. I'm gonna to look to legal counsel real quick to ask for guidance on how we should approve these. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe, is there also? So we have two, uh, two items on the agenda. The approval of Planning Commission minutes and approval of Design Review Commission minutes. Um, Only those members of the current commission who are members of their respective commission for each uh, each item should vote on this next issue, or on these next items. Um, even though we, we don't technically have a quorum for that, mm -hmm. you are the only folks who can vote on it. So. Okay, that's what my thought was, but I wanted to clarify. So I'll go ahead and ask for an approval of the Planning Commission September 7th um, meeting minutes. Um, since my joke fell flat in the beginning, I'll go ahead and make that motion. <laughs> um, so I'd like to make a motion for approval of Planning Commission meeting minutes for September 7th, 2016. I have a, uh, uh, um, a motion by past Chairman Ayler. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Bloomfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries. I'll move on to my design review board minute partners here. I'm going to have a approval of the minutes from the September 15th meeting, please. I motion we approve item 19. I have a motion by Vice Chair Anderson. Is there a second? No second. Um, by, uh, second by Commissioner Johns. All in favor? Aye. Uh, none opposed. Motion carries. And we'll move on to communications. Report from chairman and members of the commission on current events. I'll just thank the commission for, appoint, for my appointment of the chairmanship. Look forward to serving you in equal to or better value than you got at the previous chairman. <laughs> I hope you do better. <laughs> Anyone else have anything else? All right, moving on. Report from council liaison. I'm not as tall as Josh. Thank you, Chairman. Um, congratulations to all of you for being sworn in tonight to be the members of our newly formed Planning Commission. I look forward to working with all of you. Um, to the new members, Brian Johns, Brian Anderson, uh, I know that I know you both, but in the past I've taken time to go to breakfast or lunch with the, with the commissioner, so I'd love to be able to set that up with you just so that we can get to know each other a little bit better if you'd like to. So I know I have your email addresses, so I'll get back to you on that. Um, you're doing a great job, Commissioner Sipple. I knew you would. And um, I just want to give you a couple of notes for things that are going on in the community. Um, October 12th, we'll begin early voting for the general election that will happen on November 8th. So anybody who receives early ballots, let's make sure we get those in the mail and send those back so that we don't end up counting votes for two weeks after the general election like we did this time. <laughs> um, I know most of you probably heard that we were ranked the second safest city in the United States again for the fourth year in a row by United States, um, that's, that would be by Law Street Media. Their ranking is based 
primarily on a comparison of violent crime rates, not overall crime rates, and our chief Tim Dorn was proud to report that based on a review of the 2015 FBI Uniform Crime Report, Gilbert, Arizona has attained the lowest overall crime rate of the top 100 largest communities in the United States. So that makes us number one. No matter how you look at it, that makes us number one. So that happens because we have a great police department. We have um, Gilbert Fire and Rescue that works so well with our police department. And because of the members of our community that stay on top of issues, and report things to the police in a timely manner. And they police their own communities in a way by keeping an eye on their neighbors' homes and their properties while people are away, and that helps for everybody. One more item, the downtown concert series starts on 10-13, um, and those concerts are now held at Water Tower Park underneath our beautiful water tower, and that will be at 6.30 p.m. So thank you for all you do. Thanks for volunteering in our community. Thank you. Move on to planning manager, current events, Linda. Well, I really don't have anything to add to uh, Council Member Peterson's list, so thank you for a, a very complete list. Thank you for volunteering and serving our community. I'm very much looking forward to this mix of uh, expertise, so thank you for being here. Thank you, Linda. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. <laughs>